What you are seeing today started from Marrakesh in Morocco when we realized that it is Ghana's turn to host the climate change. We brought some core people together to look at this issue and I presented a paper and a letter to confirm our readiness to host. The local government minister was also there together we let them understand that Ghana is more than ready to host. Later, a delegation was sent to Ghana to assess the readiness we are talking about. They came and they realized everything was fine. This week is important because uh, it's not that it gives us ideas. It just, uh, it's for us to see the mobilization on the ground, to see already who's there, who's interested, who's working. And it's also um, um, a kind of like a first meeting with our partners, because we have several partners that are directly involved uh, in this, uh, in the Climate Week uh, uh, Summit. And uh, so for us, it is also an occasion to meet with them and to um, pave the way to the summit in October, to the Climate Chance Summit uh, in October 2019. First of all, I think the participation has been great. Um, I didn't expect that there would be this massive uh, participation, especially from uh, Africans themselves. I have been to many international conferences on Africa, and you may go there and you find that there are many non-Africans participating than Africans. But this one, it looks like the, the number of Africans uh, participating uh, is great. And that, that suggests to me that um, maybe we are, we are ready to, to take our own destiny into our own hands. Uh, in fact, Energy 2050 is working on, on, let's say, on the transversal issue about a systemic approach of development. So we are involved in negotiation and climate negotiation. We, we designed seven INDC, we designed also some climate fund, you know, let's say files to, uh, for countries. And so far we are working also with cities like UCLG Africa, and we are, let's say, working on the climate task force to help cities to, to let's say, have access to localization of, of NDC and also to try to have access to climate finance. So we are working both on technical, on political size and also to support local governments to implement concrete projects. What we call NDCs, I repeat, is just the taking into consideration the climate impact on our development agenda. It is not a different agenda. It is the same agenda, but with the climate and resilience led. We have developed a set of tools to report on what we are doing in terms of the implementation of the NDCs. These tools should also be used for the implementation of the, let me say, the, the locally determined contribution feeding into the nationally determined contribution. And we are calling for this right now because the second generation of NDCs are coming up. And we just call to start <coughs> the exercise of locally determined contribution that will then be owned by stakeholders at the local level and feed into the elaboration of the new generation of the nationally determined contribution. I've seen a lot of young people and I think this is very good because um, to see all this youth that is really mobilized on the climate um, issues, uh, my impression is that um, I also see that there is um, a very strong um, will to move forward and um, to show to the world that Africa is 
uh, with the rest of the world in this fight. Frankly, Africa has to be the place where the stories should happen. Why? Because, for example, if you look to cities, there will be, let's say, more than 500 million inhabitants. Uh, and in the very next decade, there will be more than 2 billion in urban inhabitants. So if you imagine, if you miss the points here to help cities to have low carbon development patterns, you will miss a lot of, let's say, difficulties to reach some national commitments for climate change. So this is why we are so involved in these kind of events. Africa, because uh, we know that the continent is directly impacted by climate change. And uh, we think that um, there's a strong mobilization going on here and we need to carry this voice and uh, gather all the non-state actors, African non-state actors together um, to um, showcase and to show to the world that there is uh, climate action happening on the African uh, ground. Um, why did we choose Ghana? Because Ghana has become uh, the hotspot for climate action and climate mobilization uh, through the government, but also through uh, local government. And, um, and also the, the civil society has been very much mobilized. Um, anytime I have the opportunity to talk, whether it's on a political platform or talking to students or whoever, any forum that I have, I try to remind people that in spite of all the things that we're doing, if we don't think climate, uh, at the end of the day, the environment is that which contains all of us. So you cannot pursue economic policy or any other policy without thinking about the environment. Because at the end of the day, it's the environment that will determine whether you are surviving or you are not surviving. And so that has been my uh, something I say in all my introductory uh, remarks, even when I'm in a church, uh, saying something about. So it's been my language. And I think it should be the language of every one of us, because it's a fight that we must all be involved. It's not for a, a particular ministry or a particular agency. Every body who is conscious of the of the effect of climate change must also be uh, you know an advocate for for people to be thinking the climate the issues around climate change must be explained in a very simple way to a certain degree mm -hmm. because people feel a bit distance from the subject matter and they are unable to respond to it People are aware of the environment, but not too conscious of it, because there are other motivating factors that probably could prioritize, they, they prioritize, and that's where the challenge is. If you can explain to the people who are along the coast that the tidal waves that comes quite often is as a result of climate change, they will be mind, more mindful on how to, to protect their environment and then to save their habitation where they are. If we can explain climate change issues to the ordinary area, because the action taken by each and every individual will impact negatively or positively on the climate. If people are coming to put up their buildings, and they will redesign their body to accommodate the existing trees without cutting it. I think that that is going to serve purpose. We've conducted inventory and then we've identified some few areas. One is on waste management, the other issue is on the uh, housing, the type of buildings that are coming up. The other matter, other issue is also on transportation. Actually, we are the hosts of this summit. But in Ghana, we all know we cannot do anything without the support of the Ministry of Local Government. That's why we have collaborated and making sure that the summit will be success. This particular summit is targeting at non-state actors. 
that's the major key word that we are looking at. We, we, we are saying this because we are looking at it more locally than nationalistic approach. The funding issues has become a critical issue in this our discussion of these climate issues. We, we have had discussions with the Africa Development Bank. We want everybody to get involved. They are expecting us to bring a proposal so that we look at how locally we are going to benefit from these monies that they have reserved for such programs. And, uh, and the way forward, we, we have discussed with them. So funding will not be much a problem. The Africa Development Bank is ready, and the World Bank, they are all ready to assist to make sure we get to where we want to get. I think it's going to be a very, very big summit. We're expecting about 1,000 non-state actors uh, from local governments um, to civil societies, uh, businesses, uh, scientists, um, educators. Um, so we're expecting this big, big mobilization and uh, it's going to be really um, the momentum uh, in October 2019 in Ghana. My expectation is that we should always uh, get to a point where we know exactly what we are doing from paper to implementation. Uh, we, I know that we have developed a very uh, good nationally determined uh, criteria, documents and all this policy stuff. It is about time we want to see what is it that we are doing on the ground and how we are integrating the whole climate uh, issue into all sectors of, of, of our national life. That's what I want to see. Oh, we are also partner, I remember, with this, uh, this uh, let's say, networks and initiative. And, and it's also something to be added in the global process because we have the official process and we have the non-stakeholders process. So these two big ones, they are already more or less working together. But now, our vision, Energy 2050 vision, is that they need to reinforce themselves. Why? Because if we just rely on political statement at national levels, we need guys to implement concretely. So yes, we need a political framework, but we need guys to support innovation, to, you know, to make bridge between sectors, to try to find new solutions, to be duplicable, scalable, everywhere. So I would say the non-stakeholders parties also has to be more, let's say, at the upfront of the agenda. And why not take some political commitments because at the end they will be the ones to put in place so we are also involved in this one in October and even in the ones in New York at the end to push at the upfront the voice of cities and non-stakeholders let's say commitments to support the climate agenda so this is why everything has to be connected somewhere once again it affords us an opportunity to prepare and do more in terms of climate and it's an opportunity also to show what Accra and Ghana is doing in the area of climate change. And it's also an opportunity to continue to network with the private sector, donors, and other partners. Remember, we're providing the necessary leadership, but to win the battle on climate change, it's a concerted effort by all stakeholders and partners. So this summit, we are expecting big things to happen at this summit. At least at the end of the summit, we should be able to say to the world that yes, Ghana, we have got it.